Greetings. Welcome to worship at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church. As we begin our service, please join me in the responsive call to worship. During Advent, we wait for the one promised in Scripture, and he was called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who will bring answers to a world filled with questions, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who can heal what has been wounded and mend what has been broken. And, we will, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who can renew our weary spirits and ignite our hearts with hope. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Let us pray together. O God, in times past, your people looked for you in heavenly eclipses. They listened for you in howling winds and learned of you in quaking mountains. But now we know that you are found among us, not in the glitter of a mall, but in a shelter for the homeless not through the pitch of a TV commercial, but in the whimper of a child. You come not clothed in the comforts of the privileged, but swaddled in the needs of the neglected. Open our eyes that we might witness the appearance of the angels this year. Open our ears that we might hear the testimony of the shepherds. Open our hearts that we might ponder the secrets of Mary and the faithfulness of Joseph. And open our mouths that we might shout the good news of the coming of the Lord. Turn us towards the light of your grace that comes in this season once more. Amen. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope. It reminds us that Jesus was sent not only to be our savior, but also to be our wonderful counselor the one who hears our prayers with compassion and who offers guidance when we seek it. As we begin the season of Advent, we remember that our rest can be found in God and through the gift of God's Son, our hope is forever restored. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your promises and for coming to earth as our wonderful counselor. As we begin our Advent journey, Help us to know the abiding hope that comes from knowing that you will keep your promises to us. May we radiate that hope in everything we say and do. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it 
it's time to light the candle. Soon God's promise will be here. Young and old, we wait together for the Savior drawing near. Light will overcome the darkness. See the hope the Christ child brings. This reading from Matthew chapter 24, beginning with the 36th verse. Listen for the word of God. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, 
and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, I once read a very thoughtful reflection on life. It was a reflection of a person regarding their childhood tradition that later came to have a guiding influence upon this person's life. The story read, As a child, I went with my mother to visit the Veterans Hospital. Went is the wrong word. I was dragged because I didn't really want to go. The hospital had all of the cachet and charm of a workhouse. The men were there for every imaginable disability, some of them really upsetting to me as a child. I couldn't understand why they looked so miserable and why they didn't get out of bed. Mother went there every week. She was the only woman these men saw, except for the nurses who were, of necessity I suppose, real battle axes. And mom dragged me along every Christmas as she went from bed to bed, offering a gift and some affection to each of these men. She knew every one of them and had a kind word for each one. Even then as a child, I knew there was a message in that experience. The message didn't come through very clearly then, but it kept coming over and over, and I still don't have it all. But God was trying to say something to me, and the reason I am in ministry now is somehow connected to my mother dragging me along to that uncomfortable and ugly place. End of quote. This person continued to say, God keeps doing that. God nudges us into church at Christmas, and sometimes we go for all the wrong reasons. But God whispers in our ear, pay attention. Something is going on here that is really important. And someday the penny will drop, end of quote. On this first Sunday of Advent, let us be reminded that God's miracles happen all around us, and more often than not in the most unexpected places, sometimes through the most unexpected of people. So we would do well to pay attention, to stay watchful and alert, have the eyes and the ears to see and hear how God provides insight and messages of hope and love and joy and peace if we would just stop to take notice. You see, the love of God, the kind of love that was shown in the birth of Jesus the Christ, comes in the most surprising of ways and circumstances which have the power and the ability to transform our very being. When you really think about it, Mary and Elizabeth might have been unlikely and unbelievable vessels of the prophetic vision. Elizabeth, who was unable to bear children through most of her life, now by some miracle finds that she is indeed pregnant with child, and not just any child, but pregnant with child that would become the powerful John the Baptizer, the one who would prepare the way for the Messiah. Thank God Elizabeth, Elizabeth was attentive as to how her life was being used for the glory of God. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, one with no particular elevated position of status in the community, on the contrary, a common person, but with an uncommon strength of faith. She is found with child before she had consum consummated her marriage to Joseph, which put her in a tremendously unscrupulous and uncompromising position with regards to the attitudes and scorn of the community. 
Even for her, Mary must have thought, how can this be that I am the one to give birth to the Messiah, the fulfillment of our people's hopes and longings? But Mary, attentive to the voice of God through angels, was a major role in the unfolding drama of God's plan of salvation. The shepherds, watching over their fields by night, were perhaps the most attentive to any kind of stirrings in the night. After all, the night was the most vulnerable time as darkness prevailed and as their sleeping sheep were most susceptible to wild beasts that might prey upon them. To be the shepherds, to watch over the flocks by night, called for those who most could stand guard with keen alertness and watchfulness to any signs of danger. Thank God they were also faithful enough to be keen and alert to the signs of our God who would become incarnate for the sake of the world because of God's love for the world. Indeed, open and receptive to the surprising visit of angels who would lead them to the Christ child. We too are called to such alertness and openness. Yes, aware of the dangers that might consume our lives as if we might be swept away or dashed aside or as our scripture reading seems to warn, left behind. But I think we are more called to focus on and be attentive to the surprising ways of God's spirit and how it, it encompasses our lives and leads us to places and persons where God's light can redeem our lives and make us new again, transformed. And the Magi, whose foreign stargazers, those foreign stargazers, astrologers as many would call them, they were not of the Jewish community nor of the Judaic faith. They were Gentiles, but they shall be forever deemed wise men and kingly because they were attentive to the surprising signs of divine movement in the world as revealed by the heavenly starscape. And they had the heart to venture forth into the unknown places and believe that God's love could truly be revealed in a baby of lowly birth, lying in a dirty feeding trough, surrounded by humble parents. Don't you see? We are those wise men, those wise people, seekers of the holy light of God that intercedes for and desires to break forth into the lives of us all. You are the royal and the kingly, valued and treasured for the sacred gift of God that is you. We are the shepherds of the night. We are the Elizabeths and the Josephs and the Marys of the world. If we have the heart and the soul, the mind and the strength to love our God so much that we become keenly aware of the surprising signs of God's redeeming love that is here and now and always coming to us again. If you have, if we have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the hearts to perceive, and the minds to understand, and the spirit to believe. Stay watchful, be attentive, do not be caught unaware in this season, because you see, with all of the commercialization of the season, all of the advertisements for what others want to make you think it's about, so you will buy, 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 it's easy to become blind to and unconcerned with what Christmas is truly about. The love of God that has come down and comes down once again with hope and peace, joy and love. But let us not stop there, for Christmas is not only about being attentive to the surprising works of God in the unexpected, it is equally about responding to the surprise of God's gracious gift of love. It's about stepping out onto the stage of God's sacred drama of hope and redemption and take your part, take our part. Many years ago, I read an uplifting story about a church, surely not too different from West Los Angeles United Methodist Church, a church drama group 
presented a special play on the weekend before Christmas, a kind of dessert and drama production of Charles Dickens' own classic, A Christmas Carol. The church fellowship hall was transformed into a theater. Folding chairs were clustered around tables, all facing a makeshift stage fitted with painted backdrops of the tenements and sooty chimneys of 19th century London. When the audience gathered, they were handed their programs. Some were amused to note that the part of the tight-fisted Ebenezer Scrooge was being played by the chairman of the church board, a gentleman of quite unscrooge-like generosity. The congregation, however, was so impressed, though, by the skills and energy he brought to, the, to his role. He growled his way through the opening scenes, ringing out every bah humbug with misery and ill will. He shivered with fright and dreadful self-recognition as he was confronted by the series of Christmas ghosts of past, present, and future. The final scene called for a transformed and jubilant Scrooge to chase the shadows of a remorseful night and to greet the light of Christmas Day by flinging open his bedroom window and bellowing out festively to the startled city street below. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! Then Scrooge, wishing to bestow Christmas gifts upon the needy of London and looking for someone to help dispense his cheer, was to act as if he had spied a street urchin passing by and pointing vigorously at an imaginary figure, he shouted, Hey, you boy, yes, you there, come up here, boy. I've got something wonderful for you to do. But then something beautiful and unexpected happened when the radiant and transformed Scrooge beckoned from the window a six-year-old boy in the audience, seated with his parents, spontaneously jumped out of his chair in response to this jubilant and generous call and jumped up onto the stage, ready and willing to do something wonderful for the exuberant and joyful Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge perched above. The actor playing Scrooge blinked in disbelief there was now this unscripted child with the audience, from the audience, standing on center stage. What to do? What to do? The audience held its breath. Then the person of faith beneath the veneer of Scrooge held his breath, oh, took charge, and bounding down from his window perch, he strode across the stage and cheerily embraced that waiting boy, his voice full of blessings, saying, Yes, indeed, you are the very one, the very one I had in mind. Then this quick-thinking church member playing the part of Scrooge, Scrooge finished his lines that he was supposed to make to the imaginary boy, which was a request to help him purchase many gifts from merchants throughout the town to give to needy families, and then he gently led the young six-year-old back to his seat in the audience to resume the play. When the curtain calls were held, it was, of course, this enthusiastic child of God, the one who personally felt summoned from his seat, who received, along with the old Ebenezer himself, the audience's loudest and warmest applause. Pay attention and be watchful in these weeks during Advent as Christmas and through every day of your living for the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of God is indeed here. And it comes over and over again in the one who is Christ the Lord. But blessed are those who, because of this good news, they hear, they hear a calling and feel so personally summoned that they jump out of their common and comfortable places and positions, like shepherd and magi, like Elizabeth and Joseph and Mary, 
like an enthusiastic six-year-old at a church drama, and they rise up, and they leap onto the stage of God's unfolding drama of love, ready to take and claim their role in helping to bring the light of God's love revealed in the Son of Man, our Emmanuel, into fullness, not just in this season, but throughout the year and the years. Yes, you, you are the very one, the very one that God and Jesus Christ had in mind. It is said in the Gospel of John that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But let us never forget that in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus proclaimed, you, you are the light of the world. Yes, you. You are the very one indeed to help bring Christ's light of hope, peace, love, and joy at Christmas into a hurting and needy world. As Christ comes into the world as the light of God at Christmas, may we be the very best reflection of that light in Jesus Christ. The peace be with you, sisters and brothers, siblings of the faith. Amen. Would you please join with me in prayer? Almighty God, please bless us in this season of Advent. Make this time truly a season of renewal of faith, a time for watchful and attent attentive listening to the Spirit and the indwelling of your Spirit of hope, love, peace, and joy. Please, O oh God, deepen our commitment and passion to be vessels of your love to one another, to our neighbors, to the community and world. Let the world know that your light indeed shines in the world through our kind words and our good deeds of forgiveness and mercy, justice and compassion. Be present in all that we lay before you in prayer, O oh God, all of our joys and concerns. Help us to know that you hear and know every thought and wor word even before we speak them. This we pray in Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing prayer, now hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hear now these words of benediction. Send us forth, O God, into this week. Lead us to Christmas as we seek your signs. Send us forth to find the peace, hope, love, and joy of your presence buried beneath the tinsel, the gifts, the cards, the partying, the carols, and even the bills. Send us forth as your people to experience your birth into our lives that can bring order and purpose to all that we do. Amen.